In January 2021, the Kalahari Trans Frontier Park received a massive amount of rain, completely transforming the desert into a lush paradise filled with uncharacteristic scenes of colorful flowers, natural pools of water, and tall green grass in the otherwise dusty riverbeds. And luckily for me and my friend Owen Groble who joined me, we had two full weeks to admire this incredible park in a state that very few people have ever seen it. Sit back and enjoy all the highlights from our amazing trip through a green Kalahari. Our very first drive was one for the books and set the tone for the rest of the trip which would produce some of the best lion, leopard and cheetah sightings I've ever had in my life. After a relatively slow start, we came across a lioness resting under a tree near Malkflate picnic site. Shortly after, it started raining and she walked to a nearby pool of water in the road to quench her thirst, before walking straight back towards us. This lush, wet scene was unlike anything I'd ever experienced in the usually dry Kalahari, and I realized we were in for a treat over the coming weeks. It turns out that she had a Gemsbok kill stashed nearby, and we were lucky enough to watch her feed on it over the next couple of days. Every so often she would stroll over to the puddle in the road to drink, chasing up hundreds of butterflies that lined the edges of all the shallow water. On that first game drive we also spotted two cheetah brothers disappearing over a ridge near KK, and another lioness walking along the road just north of Liutrol. And then, in the fading light close to Tuirifiran, Owen spotted something. A leopard sitting under a camel thorn tree. Seconds later, a second, much smaller leopard came walking down the tree trunk and joined what we assumed at that stage to be its mother. Only when the tiny female crouched down in front of the male did we realize it was a mating pair. It was only the first of 24 drives and we had already seen lions, cheetahs and two elusive desert leopards. During the next few game drives, we admired every kilometer of this strange and colorful Kalahari, grateful for the unexpected, cool and overcast conditions that shielded us from the typical unbearably hot summer's days. Certain areas were covered in stunning pink and white flay lilies, and there were carpets of bright yellow devil's thorn flowers that lie dormant for years waiting for good rains beside most of the roads. Almost every ostrich family had chicks, some of them tiny and some of them a little bit bigger. We spent hours watching these little bundles of fluff foraging between their parents, who would head for the few remaining open areas in the riverbeds to take a dust bath late in the afternoon. Everywhere we looked, there were birds posing for photographs.
that is pin sharp. If you've ever considered renting a long lens for the Kalahari, check out Outdoor Photo. I've added a link to their rental department in the description below. Our third afternoon drive was another unforgettable one. Not only did we see the only brown ahino of the trip, but we also spotted a male leopard walking along a dune crest near Salmaflue. It turned out to be the same male that we had seen mating on the first afternoon, Bocello, and he seemed completely oblivious to the crowd that had gathered to watch him walk along the Nossop riverbed. Little did we know that six days later we would bump into him again more than 50 kilometers away for what was undoubtedly the highlight of the trip. But first we headed north to Norsop. It quickly became clear that the whole park had received good rains, with more natural pools of water, colorful flowers and riverbeds that looked more like fairways as far as the eye could see. It really was a time of plenty, with thousands of grazers leaving the relative safety of the dunes to fill their bellies on the tastier grasses growing along the riverbeds. Despite the wet conditions, our awesome sightings continued. On our first morning drive from Nosop, Owen spotted a mother cheetah and a cub sitting in the rain. She was extremely alert and kept her eyes fixed on something in the distance. As it turned out, there was a second cub and the three of them were on the hunt, looking for an unsuspecting springbok to take down. They were in no rush and slowly made their way south along the riverbed, stopping every hundred meters or so to scan their surroundings. Luckily for us, the cubs were in a very playful mood, chasing each other around and using a large fallen tree as a jungle gym. Because of the bad weather, we were the only car there for most of the sighting and although they never caught their springbuck, it was definitely one of the best predator sightings of the entire trip. Our plan was to head from Nosop to visit Grootkolk and Garagap, but by this time the persistent rain had flooded the road north. The going was slow and uncomfortable and there were even reports of people getting stuck near Leierstraai. You never know what might happen to you in the middle of nowhere. You might have a breakdown or get stuck in the thick sand, or in this case, the mud. And that's why I always take a satellite phone with me to the Kalahari. I can highly recommend a company called sat for rent which I've linked in the description below. We decided not to push our luck. Nuts. Luckily for us, there was space at Tuerifiren, so we decided to head back south. Tuerifiren is one of the most underrated camps in the Kalahari, perhaps because it's large, busy and right at the entrance gate. But for game viewing, it's hard to beat. After only two days away, we returned to this highly productive area and we picked up exactly where we had left off. We were always through the gate first early in the mornings and on the 18th of January before the sun rose, Owen spotted two cheetah brothers lying on a low dune. We watched as the sky behind them turned from purple to blue as the sun's rays bathed them in gold. We would find them again not far from there later that afternoon, jumping into a massive camel thorn tree to mark their territory. Mm -hmm. 
I just love how plentiful and relaxed the cheetahs are in the Kalahari, something that we would experience again the following day, which turned out to be one of those days in the bush that we'll talk about for years and years to come. After entering the game viewing area first again, we decided to shoot north along the Nossop riverbed in the hope of bumping into lions. Not far from Roypitz we found two young males, one with a dark mane and one with a blond mane. In fact, we had briefly seen these brothers earlier in the trip, but on this morning they would treat us properly. Shortly after we arrived they started play fighting, tackling each other and rolling around on the ground, making for some incredible photographic opportunities. And that's when the blonde male started roaring. Then something very unexpected happened. The young male lay down on a sandy patch in the middle of the riverbed, looked over his shoulder and then rolled onto his back like a kitty cat. The other lion walked over and lay down right next to him before rolling over as well and gently pawing his brother. The bond between them and their affection for each other was unmistakable. And to top off the morning, we found the two cheetah boys again on the way back to Tuirifuren, just chilling in the road before getting up to drink from a small muddy puddle in the road. We checked out of Tuirifuren and headed towards our next camp. Kilikranki. But just as we hit the Aub riverbed, someone told us about a mating pair of leopards they had seen no more than an hour earlier near Kamkwa picnic site, so we headed there instead. Long story short, the two leopards had crawled under a bush to hide from the sun, but we waited patiently for four and a half hours until one of them, a the female, finally stuck out her head at about half past three. The two leopards slowly made their way down the dune and walked straight towards us before briefly pausing under a camel thorn tree. The male was Porcello, who we had seen mating near Tuirifuren on that very first drive, and the female, who had jumped in another tree by now, was called Mira. We had actually seen her 13-month-old son Mpilo two days earlier, but there had been no signs of his sister Minenle. Porcello and Mira crossed the road and walked out into the open as a storm threatened on the horizon behind them. And there, right in front of us, the pair mated. There was only one other car with us to witness this incredible sighting. The two lovebirds walked across to the Calcrete Ridge on the opposite side of the Aub riverbed. There they lay down for a while and then they continued to walk north very slowly. They were obviously not hungry when they passed a herd of distressed springbuck and headed straight for Kumpkwa picnic site. This is where they eventually settled, so we left them and drove back south to Kilikranki 
where we celebrated a magnificent day in the Kalahari to the soundtrack of Barking Geckos. Just when we thought it couldn't get any better, Mira surprised us the following morning by bringing out both of her cubs. Shortly after 8 o'clock we found all three of them walking in the riverbed near Montrose waterhole. At some stage, Pilo jumped onto a low-hanging branch to sharpen his claws. At this stage, the other two leopards were hardly visible because of the tall grass, but we could see them walk past underneath. As soon as Minentle approached her brother, I said to Owen, wouldn't it be incredible if she jumps up next to him? Which is exactly what she did, knocking him off. Impilo tried to pull his sister off by grabbing her hind legs, but her balance was too good. Eventually she jumped off on her own and they both continued to follow their mother north. Never in our wildest dreams did we think we would ever see three leopards together in the Kalahari. The last three days were spent around Mata Mata, where we had a few more amazing sightings. But ultimately we had to turn back to Tuirafuren because of more rain, car trouble and bad stomachs. Whatever you do, never ever drink the tap water in the Kalahari. These two weeks were some of the best I've ever experienced in the park, to a large degree thanks to my trusty Kalahari self-drive book, which contains detailed information about all the camps, waterholes and the best routes for game feed. I've added a link in the description below if you'd like to order it online. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below what your favorite camps and waterholes are in the Kalahari. Also check out my other videos including a review on Tuirafuren Rest Camp and another one in which I share my top 10 tips to find leopards in the Kalahari.